Russian and Chinese delegations are visiting North Korea just ahead of the 70th anniversary of Korean War shaking the US-led world order that has now been witnessing multiple diplomatic uneasiness, especially in the Korean Peninsula. As Moscow and Beijing are set to visit North Korea and celebrate the 70th Victory Day anniversary, the world looks at North Korea's close allies and its sworn rival, the United States, just amid an unsteady world order. North Korea is celebrating the Victory Day on 27th of July that brought an end to the war between North and South Korea. Now, the war that began in 1950 killed millions in the Korean Peninsula when the Chinese and Soviet-backed North Korean invaded the United States-backed South Korea. This year's celebrations are to be followed by a major military parade in North Korea's capital, Pyongyang. Amid sanction wars and North Korea's frequent missile testings, the US has been frequently claiming that China and Russia are sharing discrete contacts among themselves. However, all three states have denied these allegations, whether it is Russia, China or even the United uh, or even um, North Korea. Not to forget, the timing of uh, these celebrations is going to be something specially significant. Let's not forget. The war in Ukraine is also on. What should we expect from the delegation uh, visiting North Korea, whether it is the Chinese delegation or the Russian delegation? We'll try and find out in just a bit. For now, here are the reactions. China and Russia are the most close friends. The two countries have always had a close relationship with each other. 今年是朝鲜战争停战七十周年，中方应邀派高级别代表团访朝，并出席相关的纪念活动，体现了双方对巩固和发展中朝关系的高度重视。我们相信这次访问有利于推动中朝关系的健康稳定发展，有利于促进地区的和平稳定，也有利于为政治解决半岛问题创造条件。All right, senior journalist from Russia, Fred Bear is joining me live. Good to have you on the show, Fred. When we talk historically, how did the Soviet Union and China support North Korea during its war? Uh, let's try and get a background first before we delve deeper. Well, we know for sure that uh, this Soviet Union gave a lot of military support uh, to, to North Korea. Uh, but it was the Chinese, uh, the, the new Chinese People's Republic that intervened with that support. And of that war in, in 1950, they, they just swept. The Americans had pretty well wrapped it up uh, and, and were winning when the Chinese wave of forces swept in and, and uh, pushed them all the way back to the 38th parallel. Uh, it, it's a fascinating history, a terribly destructive war. And it stalemated there on the 38th parallel until they finally formalized that into the sort of no war, no peace situation that has prevailed ever since 70 years now uh, and, uh, and counting. Right. Um, Fred, at a time of war, what do these visits indicate, especially for Russia, North Korea military ties? I think that it's significant that, that uh, it's the defense minister Sergei Shoigu, who will be attending this uh, 70th anniversary uh, parade, celebration, whatever we want to call it. Um, uh, you know, North Korea was, was a backwater for a long time. Uh, Russia was cooperating with Western efforts to try to limit its um, nuclear program, uh, hem it in with sanctions and so on, and until... Uh, this new situation erupted and now North Korea takes on uh, a new importance for Russia as the world seems to uh, divide into blocks again. Uh, countries like North Korea become important pawns on the big chessboard uh, and any chance of, of cooperation between the powers, I mean between Russia and the United States and Europe and so on, has evaporated. Uh, so I, I think that there there are um, I mean general ties being revived from the Cold War era, but specifically mm. I, think, um, I think that North Korea can provide Russia with um, ammunition 
uh, they have Soviet standard weaponry, which Russia uses, 155 millimeter artillery shells. They must have huge stockpiles of them, which Russia kind of needs right now. So there are immediate things. Uh, but in the longer term, uh, I think cooperation uh, could be there on, on many levels. Uh, North Korea is a, is a, a, a supplier of labor, very skilled construction labor, uh, which Russia will need to rebuild if if they occupy parts of, of eastern Ukraine in future. They'll, they'll need workers to rebuild that. North Korea could be a, a supplier of that. So there are a lot of reasons, practical and ideological, to revive ties right now. That's a very interesting point that you've made about providing construction workers. Um, Fred, let's also break down the timing of the 70th anniversary of the 1953 armistice. A U.S. soldier is currently in North Korea's custody and is in fact being very mum about it. Pyongyang has frequently also been testing missiles banned under the UNSPR. Is a show of strength more important than ever for Pyongyang at the moment? I think so. I think that uh, uh, that they are... that in Pyongyang, they will be taking full advantage of the changing geopolitical climate. Uh, they're coming out of pariah status. Um, and even though both Russia and China say that they're, they're still observing the sanctions regimes uh, on North Korea, it's clearly uh, the ice is melting between them and, and that uh, now um, new, more practical um, uh, relationships will form. Fred, South Korea is garnering much larger show of international support uh, for its armistice anniversary commemorations compared to North Korea. It's going to have representatives from 22 countries who are expected to attend. How do you view the developments for North Korea, uh, especially when there's a triad being viewed at, and that of North Korea, Russia and China that too in a US-led world order? I think, I think that's predictable. I think we'll see much more of this uh, in, in future. The world is kind of dividing into blocks. And of course, the US-led block is, is, is far vaster and more powerful. Uh, and um, well, that's, a, that's been a fact of, of life all, all through my lifetime. And it continues to be so. Um, but what, what is remarkable here is that uh, the, the ice uh, that North Korea has been locked in globally is thawing, at least on that side, with Russia and China and maybe a few other countries uh, starting to take a, a much deeper interest in the place and, and uh, as I say, forming these practical bonds with it. 